Welcome back to Decentralized Radio. Today, I'm going to be talking about methylene blue, a medicinal compound that I think deserves a bigger spotlight in mainstream health. Will we ever get there? Probably not, but that's why I'm talking about it on Decentralized Radio. If you're in the health space, the esoteric health space or biohacker community, you may have heard of it. This is why people's tongues are blue. It's not meth, but it's a powerful compound. So on today's video, I'm going to dive into the history, the laundry list of benefits and use cases, the mechanism briefly and talk about why this is really important to kind of get out there. Why Big Pharma won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. And why every single person should at least know about it and have it in their house as a supplement. It's one of the few supplements I actually take on occasion for hypoxic environments, for hypoxic situations. And um, we're going to do a part one here. Part two, I'm going to also do and dive deeper into the mechanisms, into the science, quantum level, molecular level, really into the mitochondrial health benefits of methylene blue. So let's get into it. 1876, invented as a chemical dye for the textile industry. Pretty crazy. So it's over 100, it's almost 150 years old. And um, it was used for dyeing jeans and stuff in the late 19th century. And that was short-lived because 15 years later, it was discovered to be anti-parasitic by Paul Ehrlich. Paul Ehrlich was testing a bunch of dyes or a bunch of compounds, really, because malaria was a big problem. So they found that methylene blue was anti-parasitic, anti-malaria. This led to it becoming the first ever synthetic compound, synthetic drug used for medicinal purposes. Paul Ehrlich then went on to call it a magic bullet. You ever heard that term? That's where it came from. Methylene blue, baby. Magic bullet. What does that mean? It means it's a cure-all. Panacea. Can treat anything. You take it. Magic. Right down the throat. Why is that? Well, Ehrlich just began to discover that it improves so many different things. So let's go through a quick list of all of them. Anti-malarial, anti-parasitic, anti-fungal, antibacterial, anti-depressant, neuroprotective. Wow. How can it be all these things? And uh, it's also nootropic. It improves memory. And a lot of these, you know, are, are more recent research, but but Ehrlich was onto something. He knew what he was talking about. It's great for TBI and brain recovery. It's uh, really just a magic bullet. But it became popular in the 20th century for use of treating malaria, antiparasitic, also urinary tract infections, psychosis, mentioned it was antidepressant. Um, antifungal, so it's used for fish tank cleaning. Cyanide and carbon monoxide poisoning, actually. It's one of the only treatments, or maybe the only treatment, for those two toxins. Um, and that's because of the functionality, the mechanism of how they act, uh, as well as the uh, methemoglobinemia. Globinemia. That one's always hard for me to say. We'll get into that in a minute. But really, the Navy loved methylene blue. They actually didn't. They hated it. But people like Dwight D. Eisenhower loved that the Navy was peeing blue because your body can't synthesize methylene blue. So just excretes it in your urine, turns your urine darker color, um, blue, green, uh, obviously, depending on the color of your urine. Um, So the Navy was so loyal that they were peeing blue. America. Get up. This is actually something that the sailors hated, but it's fantastic for people who are actually using this as an anti-malarial drug in, say, Africa, Southeast Asia, where they often are counterfeited medicines because it's proving that this is actually functioning and it's the real deal. It's methylene blue, Um, antiviral, anti-COVID. Are you allowed to say that now, YouTube? I don't know. But COVID, January 2021, scientists found the methylene blue inhibited SARS-CoV-2 spike protein more effectively than chloroquine and suramin, which are also anti-parasitic drugs. Another paper, October 2020. That's so early. Same thing. Now, is this a surprise? Well, if you knew anything about methylene blue, no, because guess what? Hydroxychloroquine, we've all heard of that in treatment of COVID. That's a derivative of chloroquine. Guess what chloroquine is a derivative of? Methylene blue. It's the OG, antiparasitic drug. Of course, it's also helpful against COVID. So if you have long COVID, if you have some issues, maybe try it out. Can't taste, can't smell. This is not medical advice, so please, research purposes only. I mentioned emergency room treatments of carbon monoxide and cyanide and also met hemoglobinemia. What that is, is when the state of iron changes from ferrous to ferric. This means that it can no longer transport oxygen in the hemoglobin. So iron is the center of hemoglobin, which is what's transporting oxygen to your mitochondria. What's it doing there? It is serving as the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. So this is fundamentally like the biggest use case of oxygen in your body. 90 plus percent of your oxygen is used to be the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. This is where you produce ATP. This is where you produce metabolic water. This is where everything that you eat 
gets converted into electrons so that your body can pump protons into the intermembrane space through complexes one, three, and four. And then it uses complex five, the ATP synthase, which is a nanomotor to pump those protons and use that force to generate ATP from ADP, adenosine diphosphate and phosphate into adenosine triphosphate ATP, which is known as energy currency of our biology, which is a big debate that I love to get into. But but anyway, this is very important. The electron transport chain is probably the most important thing in our biology for you to be aware of. Um, producing metabolic water, producing ATP, taking input of electrons, pumping protons. This is where we generate reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress. So you may have heard of the term antioxidant. Antioxidants are combating oxidative stress by donating electrons. So inherently, this process in the electron transport chain is not very efficient or sorry, not perfectly efficient. It is very efficient depending on time of year, temperature, health, haplotype, but it's not perfectly efficient. So electrons leak. Electrons are snatched up by these pesky O2 molecules that just want to become stable. They want to have no unpaired electrons. So sometimes they're not going to complex four, they're going to complex three or one and waiting and they're going to snatch up a stalled electron. It's taking too long. Now this is okay in moderation. Reactive oxygen species are actually signaling molecules to things like our immune system so that we're aware things aren't going perfect. It's an alarm. But when that alarm is on all day, every day, that's chronic stress. That is oxidative stress. And that superoxide anion can turn into more cellular damaging things like the hydroxyl radical or peroxy nitrite, otherwise known as O. No, when it's combined with nitric oxide. And this is a problem. This is damaging for our health, damaging for our cells, um, dysfunctional mitochondria at the crux of it. And antioxidants help combat that. We have endogenous antioxidants that donate electrons so that it can fight, it can quench these reactive oxygen species that are hungry to snatch up electrons. However, these aren't perfect because they're just donating electrons. And we have, like I said, endogenous antioxidants like melatonin, like glutathione that are, you know, very effective. Dietary antioxidants, you can get into that whole argument whether they actually do anything and there's other more beneficial antioxidants things like grounding they're providing free and mobile electrons but methylene blue why is methylene blue so good because it is an antioxidant it has actually been called the master antioxidant but that's because it's not just an antioxidant according to dr gonzalez lima who's basically a methylene blue expert and doing a lot of this research he calls methylene blue an electron cycler why is that it's because methylene blue can both donate and accept electrons it can donate directly to cytochrome C oxidase or complex four where metabolic water is produced, where oxygen is waiting to be that final electron acceptor, but it can donate them. It can shuttle electrons around the electron transport chain. It can take them from complex one and then shuttle them to complex four if that's where it's needed most. Methylene blue really just improves the efficiency of the electron transport chain and it inhibits oxidative stress. It inhibits the production of reactive oxygen species such as superoxide anion, which is that first one. Like I said, the first step is superoxide anion kind of before things get ugly. So you don't want them to get ugly. You want them to stay um, at that level and function as a signaling molecule, but not lose redox homeostasis. So that's why it's so good for all these things. So let's get into, you know, some other things. Why? That's why it's so neuroprotective. That's why it's a nootropic because your brain needs a ton of energy, it consumes 20% of all your energy and oxygen at rest. Imagine when you're using it and it's only like 2% of your weight. I had traumatic brain injuries. That's why I got into the health space. Methylene blue is fantastic prophylactically for, you know, physically damaging actions or sports or whatever on your brain, such as fighting, military combat, sports. Um, but it's also fantastic for recovery because in brain injuries, your ability to uptake glucose, your utilization of energy is dampened. Methylene blue can help with that. And that's why it's also been linked to other things such as just neurogenesis and the, you know, healing or helping of relief of symptoms in dementia and Alzheimer's. It's been shown to promote clearance of tau proteins, which is a, you know, controversial topic, whether that's a cause or an effect or, you know, a downstream side effect, like I said, of Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, Gonzalez Lima show that it's been improved spatial memory, short-term memory, psychomotor vigilance. And that's because your brain can't store energy, but you're fundamentally improving your body's ability and your brain's ability to make energy, to have an efficient mitochondria. So as mentioned, why is this controversial? Methylene blue is on the list of 
the WHO's essential medicines because of its ability to treat met hemoglobinemia, cyanide, and carbon monoxide poisoning. But no one's ever heard of it. Why? Big Pharma. They won't touch it with a 10-foot pole because it's unpatentable, even though it's low cost and it's accessible. This right here, this will last me months. Even if I was taking this every day, this would last me like two months. And it's like 40 bucks. So that's Meraki Medicinal. We've had our had the founder, CEO of that, Vance, on the line. He used it to heal his brain injuries, and now he's helping getting it out into the market because there wasn't a lot of companies out there that were doing methylene blue. The dosing, 5 to 10 milligrams is, is all I take. Low dose, that's the thing, because at high doses, all the research stops at 5 milligrams per kilogram when it becomes pro-oxidant and not an antioxidant. That is so much. That is, for me, like 400 milligrams. You don't need that much at all to get the neurological benefits, the mitochondrial benefits. And um, yeah, 5 to 10 milligrams. I love it for hypo hypoxic environments, like hiking at high elevation when I'm above 12,000 feet, uh, as I mentioned, because it has that ability to improve uh, the mitochondrial function. And I'll dive deeper into that in part two. But one thing you need to know, side effects. There's one. It's an MAO inhibitor. So monoamine oxidase is a way for our bodies, our brains to get serotonin out of the brain. Methylene blue inhibits that. That's why when you take it, you feel really good. You feel so safe. You feel happy. But if you're on SSRIs, probably a no-go. Again, this is not medical advice, but look into it. MAO inhibitor, that's methylene blue. So you do get a minor serotonin buildup temporarily. It's also why I would never take it every single day unless you actually have a severe brain injury and I would still always cycle on and off of methylene blue. But again, please do your own research. I like to take five to 10 milligrams, maybe 15 to 20 if I'm doing something crazy like hiking at 14, 15,000 feet for 12 to 18 hours. But that's methylene blue, part one. Tune in for part two if you want to take a deeper dive. Meraki Medicinal, we'll link them down below. Let me know what you think.